Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video and welcome to the Paris vlog. We are heading off to Paris this morning. It's about seven, no, it's eight o'clock now. Our train is in about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, so we have a little bit of a wait, but I thought I would introduce the vlog. I'm already actually ready on time. So, so excited for this trip. I've been excited for this trip for the longest time ever. So yeah, let's go to Paris. Um, I'm not gonna say too much. I'll just catch up with you all when we arrive at our hotel. Right, so we've arrived in Paris. I thought I'd give you guys a very quick tour of the room. Ignore, oh, I don't know what happened then. Ignore the little thing on the floor. Um, the curtains have these vel Velcro kind of um, shades, like blinds. Um, I've just pulled them down so I can show you guys the view. The bed is so lovely. It's a really nice modern room. And then we have these two windows, which have this view, which I think is lovely. So yeah, that's our room. And then that's the bathroom over there. Jack's just in there. And on the other side, we have this view. Good morning, everybody. It's day one of Paris. And we, our hotel has a spa and Jack booked it. And Jacko is, Jack loves the spa. So he booked us a hotel with a spa. And there we go. This is what it looks like when you walk in. And that's the spa. So I actually think that we're going to be the only ones because we actually struggle to get into this room. <laughs> yeah, we really struggle to get into this room. Here's the rest of the spa from the other side and the pool area. See, so yeah, I was just saying that we actually struggle to get in. Um, like you have to reserve it, and I think they forgot that we'd reserved it for nine o'clock. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think we're going to be the only ones here. started distracting me and saying all sorts of weird funny nonsense um i won't insert those clips into this vlog because i think he would actually kill me but anyway i am back from paris we had such a wonderful time in paris um i literally vlogged nothing literally vlogged nothing i think the paris part might be a minute long if that i'm sorry it was a mini holiday, a mini state break, but it was also, but the trip was really, um, was really put in place. What was the phrase? God. We organised a trip because it was a family trip to see our family in Paris. So we went to go see them because we are currently trying to organise our, um, like our traditional wedding, African traditional wedding. We're trying to organise that and yeah so we went to do all that and it was such an interesting experience um for me and for jack but it was lovely so i obviously couldn't really film that part of the vlog um and in general we just ate good food we were around great company didn't really vlog much but i thought i would finish this video we're doing my Hermes unboxing because do I just do the unboxing or do I tell you the little story first? I'll just quickly tell you guys up until the point that I got this item. So basically, um, as, I, as I was in Paris, I applied for the Hermes leather appointments. If you want a bag and you don't want to do the whole game thing, even though this is still a game, you can apply for an appointment at one of the three Paris stores 
Um, we were there for three days. So, well, three full days where I could actually, if I got an appointment, I could actually attend. Um, we were there for three days where I could actually attend if I was lucky enough to get an appointment. I applied every single day. Jack applied every single day as well. Well, I, well, I applied for him. Um, and we weren't lucky. This is my second time being in Paris and trying to get one. This is my second time in Paris trying to get one of these appointments. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I wasn't lucky enough to get them. I even went into store and tried to get an appointment, see if they had any cancellations, because a lot of people recommend that. And yeah, they didn't have any appointments. I will talk about my whole Hermes experience once I unbox this item because I think I've got a lot of things to say. Let's unbox. <clears throat> so this is the bag. Um, uh, I got a pair of shoes. And it's funny actually, in my wish list video, I didn't even mention these shoes. I mentioned different pair I, I mentioned a different pair of Hermes shoes. And I've actually tried the white orange, which I mentioned earlier, and I have decided that right now, maybe next year for our main wedding, because obviously they're white, it will go with all of my white outfits. But I think for now, I'm kind of not that bothered about them. There's a lot of money, all of, everything from Hermes is a lot of money, so I'm not too bothered. I've kind of like parked them until next year. Um, however, I had a different pair of shoes on my wish list, and they are another very popular pair of sandals from Hermes. I'm sure you can guess what they are. I finally managed to get my hands on these Chypre sandals. Chypre, Chypre, Chypre. These sandals. Oh, it has been, I have had a right journey. <laughs> Getting these sandals has been such an experience and not and I don't mean a positive experience in the sense that could somebody please tell me why it's so hard to get your hands on these sandals so basically and um, these I'll tell you guys about the sandals first so these are the super sandals that I very very thankfully managed to get I don't even know if the word is thankfully I like finally managed to get I can't believe I finally managed to get them I have been on the hunt for them for about six months. Well, to be honest, every time I go into my Hermes store, even when I started um, my wish list at Manchester, um, I would always ask them, do you have the cheaper sandals? No, we don't have them. And every time it'd be like, no, 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 we don't have them. The only ones that we have are the fur, like the sheep, are the fur lined ones, the ones which have like the sheep skin, which in my opinion, they're gross. <laughs> Um, anyway, I've been trying to track these shoes for maybe about two years, but actually seriously in about si but actually seriously since the beginning of the year. So I went for these ones, which are like an off-white colour. They might look like they're white on camera, but they're not. They're like an off-white grey yellow colour. So it kind of gives you a look of a white shoe from afar. I feel like they're a little bit more soft. Um so in the um as in the Hermes or on the sandals, I usually go for a 40, I'm a UK size 7, um, so 40 is my normal size, I find that the orange sandals are very true to size, however with these ones I have to size up, so I actually went for 41. It's weird because I've also tried the 39.5 and the 39.5 fit me um, a, few, a few months ago, but now for some reason they, they were just too tight. So, let me tell you guys how I managed to get these shoes because this is where the juicy story begins. So like I said, I've been on the hunt for these shoes for ages. Um, every time I'm in London, I go to, um, every, every time I'm in London, I try to go to an Emma store to try and ask if they have these sandals in stock because you don't have to be on a wish list. If they're available, they usually just say you can buy them. Uh, I have been trying for the last like six months to try to get these shoes because they're just so comfortable, they're cute and actually now I know, like I, I love the orange sandals but I think I'm going to love these even more. Now that I'm pregnant as well, my feet are just going to get big and I'm really, I'm going to be mostly pregnant during the summer months so these shoes I just know are going to be a lifesaver, they are so comfortable. Um, I would recommend definitely going in and trying them on. 
um, just to know your true size because I've had to size up a whole a whole size up. I've had to go a whole size up. Anyway, I've been trying to get them in London, virtually impossible. Uh, I nearly got a pair, but I think they were playing games in the sense that they told in the sense that they were available on the system, the guy went upstairs and then he told me that they weren't available. They clearly just were saving them for a different customer. And I say that because of the story that I'm about to tell you. So when I was in Paris, I was like, do you know what, I really want a bag, but if I don't get a bag, I'm, it's okay. And um, But I, what I would like is to get these, but what I would like is to get these sheep print sandals. So every single day, if I happen to walk past an MS store, if I had like an hour spare or a little bit of time spare, we would, if, if we had a little bit of time spare, um, we would go to the Hermes store, Hermes Boutique. We went to two of them. There's one which I've never been to and I really, really want to go to it. But we went to the Faborg store and the Sevres store. I think those are the two. And um, we went to them multiple times. Like every day, if we could. I don't think it was literally every day, but... Because I was like, if I can't get them in London, then surely I should be able to get them in Paris. I mean, Paris is Hermes, is the Hermes motherland, like surely. So anyway, I think on day two, or day two, or our first proper day of um, being in Paris, I can't remember. We went to the several store and they told me that they didn't have any in stock. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's fine. Then I went to the Faborg store which was, um, I went to the Faborg store later on in the afternoon and um, I went upstairs to the shoe section. The queue in the shoe section is absolutely wild. Like you have to queue ages to be able to try any shoes on. Thankfully, I say thankfully, but hmm. Whilst you're in the queue, usually somebody will come up to you and be like, um, is there anything that you want? Let me know if I can check stock for you so that you're not just standing in this queue for no reason. So it's like, perfect. And um, I was just on my own because Jack was walking around the store. I didn't want to make him work with me. He went to the men's section and had a look around the different areas and just was like having fun by himself in the store. And I was like, I'm going to queue up to try and get these shoes. Whilst I was in the queue on my own, I was listening to people's conversations just naturally. And the woman in front of me had asked to had asked about the shoe pro sandals. She asked if they had any sheep were available and the lady was like, so sorry, we don't have any in stock. Then the lady came and spoke to me and I asked her again, like, you know, I just thought I might as well just ask her because I couldn't fully hear what what, conversa what conversation that they had had. Um, so, I, so I asked them, do you have any of these sandals in stock? I really, really want a pair. I've been to all of the different stores, well, apart from one, and I've been several times and they don't have them. I really want them. And she was like, I'm so sorry, they don't have any. For some reason, I was talking to her and then she kind of like went to go do something else mid-conversation. It was a bit random. And then another guy came and spoke to me. And then I asked him again, do you have any of the Shupra sandals? And then he went on his little computer. They had these little phones. Um, yeah, I think they're like little phones and he checked stock, he like clicked a few buttons and he was like, I'm so sorry, you can see we don't have any in stock. We don't have any in stock in your size, in any colour, I'm so sorry, the next time we should expect some is June. My heart was like, oh God, I've come here, I've not even got a leather appointment and I thought I would at least be able to get these shoes because come on, they're just shoes. Went downstairs because I was like, you know what, I'm a girl with big feet. So let me go downstairs and see if they have any of the men's in like a smaller size. So I went downstairs to the men's department. This is in the Faborg shop. Faborg shop, I don't know how to say it properly, but this is in the Faborg shop. And I went downstairs to the shoe section and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna ask if they have any of these shoe sandals in a size 39 or 40. Um, in the men's section just because like if they fit they fit i don't really care if they're men's or women's and thankfully i have big feet so this should work in my favor because to be honest whenever i look at shoes i always gravitate towards men's shoes anyway i like i just prefer them way more most of the times than women's so i kind of like stood uh, in the men's area for a while um because there's actually a really nice pair of sandals that i like for jack 
And then I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to ask the nearest person. So I went over and spoke to this lovely guy and I was like, do you have any of the Chipre sandals in the 39 um, or 40 in the men's? And he was like, oh, okay, do they not have any upstairs in the women's section? And I was like, no, I've just been up there. They told me they don't have anything and that they won't get anything till June. He looked at me and he went, really? And I was like, yeah, that's what they said. He was like, go sit over there, give me a minute. And I was like, what's going on? What, what is going on? At this point, I was thinking he's going to go downstairs and he's going to see that there's nothing. And then he's going to come back up and be like, well, there's nothing. So I was preparing myself for that. He literally went for like five minutes, came back upstairs with a box. What? And he brought out a pair of navy suede Chypre sandals. I was like, but the guy upstairs literally typed out some nonsense on his phone and showed me and was like, we don't have any. Look, we won't get any until June. Here, this other guy was bringing me a pair of Chypre sandals in my size um, in navy. Upstairs, they told me they had none. No colours, no sizes, because I was like, do you have any, like, I was giving them, you know, different sizes. Sorry, madame, we don't have any. And then this guy was bringing me a navy pair. And I was like, do you know what? I'll try the, I think they were 39.5. I said, I'll try the 39.5 um, just to see whether they fit or not. But the navy colour is kind of throwing me off. I'm really not a navy kind of girl. It's probably, if you were actually here to look in my wardrobe, you would notice that I literally do not buy anything navy. I think it's one of those colours that does nothing for me. Um, because I have dark skin, I like black. Navy is kind of like an off black and it just doesn't really complement me. I find that navy, in my opinion, is looks better on um, fairer skin, fairer features, because it's a lot softer than black. But I have dark tones, so I need a deep shade to complement my skin tone, in my opinion. So I was a little bit like, oh, you know, they only have navy. Um, I mean, I'll try them on, but I don't live navy. Um, so anyway, I tried on the 39.5. They were tight. And I was like, oh, gosh, she's probably showed me the very last pair. And they don't fit me. And to be honest, if they don't fit, there's really nothing I can do. There's no way I'm spending all this money on a pair of shoes where I'm not too sure about the colour and they don't fit. And I was just like, in my heart, in my heart, I was like, oh, so disappointing, but whatever. He came back round. Um, after I tried them on and he was like, and I asked him, are these shoes too small for me? What do you think? And he was like, yeah, they're definitely too small. Um, I'll go get you a bigger size. And I was like, what? <laughs> Give me a bigger size? What are you talking about? Uh, he was like, yeah, I'll go get you a bigger size. Um, I was so confused at that point because I was like, what you're doing right now is contradicting what they told me upstairs. And then I was like, do you know what? Is there any chance that you have them in a different colour? Um, because navy isn't one of my favourite shades. And he was like, what colour? And I was like, beige, neutral? He was like, yeah, beige. We've got beige downstairs. <laughs> what? So he went downstairs and he brought up a beige pair. These ones. Um, they do look beige in real life, but on camera, they really do look like white. Um, he went downstairs and he brought these ones up. He said, I only have a size of 41. Try them on. Let me know what you think. 41 is like two sizes bigger than the 39.5, nearly two sizes. And it's a whole size bigger than what I normally am, which is a 40. But I was like, there's literally no harm in trying them on. Try them on and they fit perfectly like perfectly and i bought them <laughs> so that is the story of how i managed to get these shoes i, I know it was a bit of a long-winded story but it just makes me question the whole hermes model i mean the guy that i dealt with was so lovely and um, when he was like 
wrapping my stuff up and he took me to the till. I asked him if there was any leather appointments and he was like, I can't check for you, but if you go over to the leather department and you smile and you ask them, they might give you one. Um, I had a bit of a joke about that, but there weren't any anyway. The guy who helped me was so lovely. I even said to him, I'm so confused because um, upstairs they told me they didn't have any and he kind of played it off as like, you know, sometimes he said that you know, working in Hermes, you can be a bit like a robot and just be like, no, no, no. Um, but I actually think that they fully know what they have in stock, but they just play games. And even though I had a lovely experience getting these shoes, it just makes me feel a little bit weird about the whole... It just makes me feel really weird. Like, why? Like, why would... Like, surely the people who work in the shoe department should know the shoes that they have in stock. And also, what was the whole showing me the thing on the computer about? Because clearly, is your computer system wrong or did you just type out some rubbish on your computer, you know, just to show me that they didn't have them? I'm a little bit confused um, about that. And it honestly just makes me feel like they all just lie to us, like literally every single one of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm being dramatic here. But I just, it makes me feel like they just, I don't know, it, it, make, it feels icky. It feels icky when you go into a store and you're being lied to because they clearly were just talking rubbish upstairs. They had multiple colours, multiple sizes in the stock room, but they were telling multiple customers, me and the person in front of me, that they didn't have any in stock. Now, I don't understand the whole business model in the sense that, right, surely being in business means you're selling product. Why are they holding product in their stock room? Who are they holding it for? Like, why hold products and let it sit in the stockroom unsold when there are people upstairs wanting, wanting to buy them? I'm just, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get the business model. I don't get like, the whole thing. I don't get the whole computer thing applying for the leather appointment. I've tried like five, like eight times now. And I still not managed to get one. Can't get an appointment in store. And actually, when you go into the Paris stores, it's probably the least luxury experience that you could think of. And, and I'm being blatantly obvious. It's not luxurious at all. Um, uh, it couldn't be far from it. Considering especially their really iconic bands, the Birkin and the Kelly. The Birkin and the Kelly are so much money. Probably the most, ex probably the most expensive handbags in the leather handbag world. The Paris stores couldn't feel less ex couldn't feel less luxurious if they tried. Um, there's just far too many people. Um, there's, there's far too many people in the stores, um, especially around the leather handbag areas. And then it just winds me up to think, well, you know, I've been applying for these appointments for months, or I've been applying for these appointments every time I'm in Paris to have absolutely no luck. I mean, God forbid trying to click with an essay. It's hard to click with an essay there, virtually impossible. I even struggle in the UK. I've not found an essay who has been really helpful and really just wants to help you buy something. <laughs> and I don't get it. Like, even things which are beyond just the, like, popular bags. How do you get one of them? Like, forget trying to get one of them. Trying to get sandals is a problem. Trying to get one of that other leather goods is a problem. And even the whole concept of you make a wish and we'll just give you whatever we have couldn't be further from luxury. Again, just couldn't be further from luxury. You know, when I shopped in other stores, like um, a while back, I was in the Dior store in Manchester. When I was in the Dior store in Manchester, um, I, was looking for, I was looking at the White Lady Dior and the woman who helped me in there was so lovely. I'm really sorry if you can hear barking. My next door neighbour's dog. When I was in the Dior store in Manchester, the sales associate in there couldn't be like, I, I can't fault her. She showed me all of the bags that they had in stock. She let me try them on. She, um, I wasn't ready to buy them because I just wanted to try. She gave me her WhatsApp and was like, if you have any further questions, let me know, we can keep in contact. Even like Chanel, people love to slam Chanel. They really do. They really love to um, slam Chanel. I bought two bags in store, one which was a classic flap. Um, 
I just randomly was in London and happened to get one. They sold it to me, they had one available and they sold it to me. It wasn't like they were trying to hold anything back or play any games. It was there, I bought it. I actually had a really lovely experience. They gave me a drink, they showed me the bags and it was great. It wasn't rushed. Even um, when I bought my trendy bag, I bought it in the Manchester store in Chanel. Again, um, I asked them to I asked them to put me on a wish list for it, um, like on a wait list. I thought it was going to take six months. It took not even a month. They came back to me and they was like, we have the bag which you requested in stock. Would you like to buy it? Went into store, bought it. And it was simple as that. When you contrast my Dior experience and my Chanel experience, which very thankfully have been positive. I've never had a negative experience in any of these stores, even Hermes. When you contrast that to Hermes, you think, well, in the Manchester store, I've been trying to get a bag for just under two years, like 18 months. And they tell me that there's nothing in stock. There probably is. Um, I try to get one, I'm trying now to get one in a London store and again, I've just been put on that wish list. Who knows if I'm gonna get one. Um, even the SA, you know, sales associate who's helped me, he was really helpful in helping me, he was really helpful in um, helping me decide on what I should, you know, put on my wish list and all that kind of thing. But he wasn't really that bothered about um, showing me other products or keeping in contact. I never took their contact details. They weren't really that bothered about that. And also, ultimately, the Paris experience has kind of tarnished my view of the brand. It feels a little bit... I don't know. I don't even know what the word. It just... Why would I spend all that money on a brand that doesn't want me to spend my money with them? Why do they play games? Why do they do that? And I'm saying this from having a positive experience from buying these shoes. Why would I want to spend that much money on an Hermes bag? So that I can flaunt around a bag and a brand which is so... It just makes me feel like you can't sit with us. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't feel luxury to me. Like, when I think of luxury, I think of being treated really well. When I think of luxury, it's a feeling. And whenever I leave an Hermes store, it's always, so sorry, we don't have that in stock. And they just look at you straight up when they know full well they have it in stock. That was my Hermes experience. I'm still gonna like, um, keep my wish list at the store, which I have renewed them um, in. I'm still gonna try to do that. I really want these sandals in black. So if I'm ever around an Hermes store, I will buy these in black. But to be honest, it's just made me feel a bit weird about them. And, you know, even when I was in Paris, I actually nearly ended up getting the Dior bag, you know, the white Dior bag. And because it would have such a lovely memory of being, you know, it being my wedding bag and it being brought and it being bought in Paris, that would be such a lovely memory. But I just held off because I was like, I don't want to buy something just because I haven't got something else, just because I didn't get an Hermes bag. Um, so I held off, and it's something that I think about, but I'm kind of gearing towards brands which actually really give you a luxury experience rather than brands who just play games. Like, it's tacky. I don't know, it's weird. It makes me feel like, it makes me feel icky about just the concept of having to wait for these bags and they'll just give me whatever when they have loads in the stock room. It's weird. Anyway, it's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. And I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.